Hello everyone, welcome to KDD Training Solutions. We are at session 1 of probability and in this session we will be discussing about basics of probability as well as problems on coins. Let's enter into our session now. I would like to start the concept using basic formula of probability that is probability of an event happening equal to number of events by number of sample space. For our understanding we can reframe these two terms as what exactly you want out of total number of choices available. So simply we can say probability is nothing but what exactly you want out of total number of choices or options available to you where number of events is what exactly you want and number of sample space is total number of choices available to you. For example in the back you have a red color, a white, a green and blue color balls. Now listen to the question carefully what is the probability of choosing a white color ball from the back. Now totally you have 4 choices or totally you have 4 options. So 4 is nothing but total number of sample space available to you. What exactly you want is a 1 white color ball. So 1 out of 4 is nothing but probability of choosing a white color ball from the back. Then what is the probability of choosing a non white color ball from the back? If 1 out of 4 is white then remaining 3 out of 4 is a non white color ball. So probability of an event happening plus probability of an event not happening will be always equal to 1. That is 1 by 4 plus 3 by 4 you get 1. So we call this 1 as total probability. So total probability is always equal to 100 percentage. 1 by 4 can be written as 25 percent and 3 by 4 is 75 percent. So 25 plus 75 equal to 100 percentage. So this total probability is always equal to 100 percentage. Sometimes we represent probability in decimal values also. So 1 by 4 can be written as 0.25 and 3 by 4 can be written as 0.75. However, total probability will be always equal to 1 and probability always lies between 0 to 1. So probability of an event always lies between 0 and 1. So if the values go beyond 1 or if the values fall below 0 then obviously your answer is wrong. Basic understanding of permutation and combination is mandatory for solving problems on probability. Because indirectly you use concepts on combination as well as arrangements in solving problems on probability. I have included the link of permutation and combination in the description. So please do have a look at it. You can expect four variety of problems in probability. So first variety problem based on coins. Second problem based on dice. Third problem based on cards. And finally problem based on urns and balls. Before start solving the problem, we should understand the calculating procedure of sample space while tossing a coin. Just now we discussed sample space is nothing but total number of choices available for us. In tossing a single coin, the total number of sample space we get is 2. That is we will get a head or a tail. So total sample space here is 2. While tossing two coins, the total number of sample space we get is 4. So either we get head on both the coins or tail on both the coins or head in first coin and tail in second coin or tail in first coin and head in second coin. So totally we have 4 sample space. What if, if the total number of coin exceeds more than 2? So here we have a structure, the structure is 2 power n. So when you toss a single coin the total number of sample space you get is 2 power 1 that is 2 sample space. When you toss 2 coins it's 2 power 2 you get 4 sample space. When you toss 3 coins it's 2 power 3 you get 8 sample space. When you toss 4 coins it's 2 power 4 so you totally get 16 sample space. When you toss 5 coins it's 2 power 5 so 32 sample space. So in this way you can easily calculate the sample space with the help of structure 2 power n. So based on the concept discussed let's enter into our first question of problems on coins. Two unbiased coins are tossed. What is the probability of getting at most one head? While, while tossing two coins, the total sample space we get is 2 power 2 that is 4. Head, head, tail, tail, head, tail and tail, head. So totally we get 4 sample space. Now the condition is what is the probability of getting at most one head? At most means the flow happens from maximum to minimum. The same we discussed in permutation and combination. Maximum there should be only one head. So minimum is always constant 0. Now while tossing the two coins you have to find where you get maximum one head. Now all these events, now in all these events in tail and head you have only one maximum head. In head and tail you have maximum one head. In tail and tail also you have maximum one head. So maximum one head means minimum there should be zero head. So this one is also accepted. But in head and head you have two heads. So this one is not accepted. So even if you have no heads that is accepted because the maximum count is limit here. So maximum only one head should be there. Minimum 
zero head is accepted but here you have two head this is not accepted so out of four three is acceptable so three by four is nothing but probability of getting at most one head so this one satisfy our condition right you have to choose an event where you get maximum one head while tossing two coins so three by four is nothing but the answer hope you understood the problem moving to our next question three unbiased coins are tossed what is the probability of getting at most two heads so this question is similar to our previous question but here you are tossing three coins while tossing three coins the total sample space we get is eight i am not mentioning all the events here total sample space is eight now here you have you are having the word at most so at most means flow happens from maximum to minimum so at most two heads so maximum count of heads should be two and minimum it can be zero now out of eight only one will not follow this condition that is head head and head apart from this all other events will hold the maximum two heads and minimum zero heads so this one is not accepted so out of eight one is not accepted remaining seven is accepted so seven by eight is nothing but probability of getting at most two heads while tossing three coins hope you understood the problem right moving to our third question five unbiased coins are tossed what is the probability of getting at least one head in it now while tossing five coins the total sample space we get is two power five that is thirty two now here you have the word at least so at least means flow happens from minimum to maximum probability of getting at least one head so minimum there should be one head in the event so minimum one head and maximum we have five faces right so we can get five heads so one head can be accepted two heads can be accepted three four and five heads can be accepted so which is not accepted if the flow is below zero I mean flow is below 1 it is not accepted so that is 0 so 0 head is not accepted while tossing 5 coins we get 0 heads only in this case tail 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 so here you will not get any head so this one is not accepted so out of 32 one is not accepted so 31 out of 32 is the probability of getting at least one head see whenever you have the word at least just remember this structure at least means 1 minus none so one is nothing but total probability so here total probability is always 100 percentage out of that you have to subtract which will not fall under the condition so here you have to find the probability of getting at least one head right now you can subtract uh, the condition where you will not get any head so where you will not get any head is in tail 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 so one out of 32 you will not get at least a single head so one minus one by 32 is nothing but 31 by 32 so this one becomes our answer hope you understood the concept right moving to our next question six coins are tossed simultaneously find the probability of getting exactly two tails while tossing six coins the total sample space we get is 2 power 6 64 now you have to find the probability of getting exactly two tails see out of the six coins if you get tail on two faces remaining four faces will be heads now tail tail head 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 or tail head tail head 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 now you have to look in how many ways these words can be jumbled so here we are using the uh, concept of permutation so in how many ways we can arrange t t and double h double h so here we totally have six words so it's six factorial where t repeated for two times so you have to divide this by two factorial and h repeated for four times so you have to divide this by four factorial so six factorial by two factorial into four factorial so six factorial can be written as six into five into four factorial and two factorial by four factorial so this four factorial and four factorial cancel so two factorial value is two so 2 and 6 for 3 times so 3 into 5 is 15 so 15 is nothing but total number of events now total number of sample space we found is 64 so 15 by 64 becomes the answer so probability of an, of getting exactly two tails is 15 by 64 hope you understood the problem right moving to our next question five coins are tossed simultaneously find the probability of getting at least two tails while tossing five coins the total number of sample space we get is 2 power 5 that is 32 now find the probability of getting at least two tails so at least two tails means minimum there can be two tails and maximum number of tails that you can expect while tossing five coins is only five because while tossing five coins you get five faces in all the five faces you can expect five tails so minimum there can be two tails and maximum number of tails is five so two to five tails is accepted so which is not accepted 
zero tiles and one tile is not accepted. If it is zero tiles, you will get all the faces as heads. If it is one tile, you get one tile and remaining four as heads. Now all the faces as heads can be happened only in one way, one out of 32. And only one tail out of five will happen in how many ways? You totally have five letters, so it's five factorial and head repeated for four times. So that is four, four factorial. So five factorial by four, four factorial is nothing but five. So in five ways, you will get one tail and four heads. So that is tail, head, 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 head. And another case is head, tail, head, head, head. So in this way, you totally get five cases. So one plus five, you get six cases that it that is not acceptable out of 32. So 6 by 32 is nothing but 3 by 16. Now our condition is whenever you have the word at least to find the probability you have to subtract none from 1. So here none is 3 by 16 and 1 minus 3 by 16 is nothing but 13 by 16. So 13 by 16 is nothing but probability of getting at least 2 tails while tossing 5 coins. Hope you understood the problem right. Moving to our next question. 7 coins are tossed simultaneously. Find the probability of getting no hits. While tossing 7 coins, the total number of sample space we get is 2 power 7. So 2 power 7 is nothing but 128. Find the probability of getting no hits. There should not be any hits. So you have only one way. That is tail, 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 tail. So this one is acceptable. So remaining all 127 cases is not acceptable out of this 128. So 1 by 128 is nothing but probability of getting no hits while tossing 7 coins. Hope you understood problem of these videos, right? In upcoming session, we shall discuss problem based on dice. Until that, stay connected with Career Deep Training Solutions. And if you haven't subscribed the channel yet, please do give your subscription as well as if you have any doubt, please don't hesitate to pass it on comment section below. Like the video and share the video to your friends. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a nice day.